right, welcome tonight. I will uh, open the meeting, the January 11th, 2021 uh, edition of the Town of Garner Planning Commission meeting. Um, looks like there may be some technical difficulties, so I'm not sure that we're streaming, but that may get resolved as we move forward. Um, thanks all for being here. Brian, if you wouldn't mind doing the roll call, please. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. I'll call the roll. John Blasco. Here. Vang Mao. Here. Gina Avent. Here. Dean Fox. Here. Vira Hogan. Here. Jefferson. Here. And Michael Voila. Here. All right, thank you, Brian. Um, just as a reminder, we'll do this. We'll conduct this meeting similar to how we did our previous virtual meeting where um, rather than having a generally open floor for discussion and comments, we will do more of a um, down the line roll call approach. So um, that'll make it easier for us to manage and for Brian to take good notes. So um, with that, we'll move forward. Um, I had no volunteers for the invocation, so we will skip that tonight. Um, bringing us- well, John, this uh, is Vira. Yes. Invocation. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Let us pray. Good Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Father God, for giving us another opportunity to come before you and make decisions concerning the town of Garner. We ask and pray to keep us safe amongst everything that's going on in the world with the virus and everything. And we ask that we could just come to a consensus and be pleasing unto your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I thank you, Ms. Hogan. Uh, next up on the agenda, we have the minutes from our last meeting of December 21. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion, please? This is Mike Foylan. I'll make that motion. And the motion is to... Uh, accept the minutes. I make a motion to accept the minutes as printed. Thank you. Do we have a second? This is Vira. I second the motion. All right. Before we take a vote, we'll go through real quick to see if there's any comments or questions. Ms. Hogan, do you have any comments or questions? No, sir. Mr. Jefferson? I do not. Mr. Voiland? I do not. Ms. Avent? No, I don't. Mr. Fox? I wasn't here, so I'll let y'all be the judge on this. All right. Mr. Mao? I do not. All right, with that, there are uh, no comments or questions. We have a motion to approve the minutes as noted. Brian, please do the roll call. The motion on the floor by Mr. Voiland is to uh, accept the minutes as presented. I'll call the vote. John Blasco. Aye. Vang Mao. Aye. Gina Avon. Aye. Dean Fox. Aye. Vira Hogan. Aye. Philip Jefferson? Aye. And Michael Voylan? Aye. Thank you. With that, we have a unanimous approval of the previous meeting's minutes. Next, we'll move into the old and new business portion of our meeting. Um, just as a general reminder to those in attendance, the conduct of the Planning Commission. This is not a scheduled public hearing. However, our meeting is open to the public so, so that the public can obtain information about the items on our agenda. The meeting will be conducted in the following order for each agenda item. Staff overview of the request, presentation by the applicant and others in support, along with comments by speakers in opposition to the request. We'll then have questions and discussion from the commission, comments and vote by the commission. Then for each agenda item, comments by the applicant and, and proponents are limited to 10 minutes and comments by opponents are limited to 10 minutes. We request that the comments not be repetitive and where possible that a spokesperson is designated to present the views of a larger group. First, on the agenda, we have conditional use uh, permit CUD Z2009 Pearl Street Townhomes. Uh, members of the commission, I would respectfully ask to recuse myself as my employer is the applicant on this project. So Mr. Ma will take over for this um, for the rezoning and the conditional use subdivision. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, the town of Garner Town staff present the overview case for Pearl Street townhomes, both for 
rezoning, and site plans. Yes, this is David Bamford. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. I will get my slideshow ready for you. And David, you need to speak up just a little bit. Okay. Uh, this is a conditional use rezoning with a conditional use subdivision plan. The property is located along Pearl Street in downtown Garner, uh, south of West Main Street. The property also has frontage along Parker Street. The tract size is approximately 2.16 acres. And uh, if this moves forward tonight, this will go to the uh, go to a town council public hearing. This map shows the vicinity of this area of Garner. A portion of the rezoning site is located here. Are you able to see my cursor or is that not visible? We can see you. Okay. We can see it. Okay. So the, the site's uh, south of West Main Street. It is uh, west of the Garner Recreation Center. It is east of the Garner baseball fields. The site also has um, a track south of Parker Street. This is a Google Street view looking south on Pearl Street with the baseball fields to the right and with the rezoning site on the left side. So it includes the site north of Parker Street and also the, a portion south of Parker Street. This map shows the zoning in this area of Garner. The site is zoned R9, which is residential. Minimum lot size is 9,000 square feet. In this area of Main Street, the Garner Recreation Center is in Central Business District. To the east, on the west side, uh, at the corner of Pearl and West Main, we do have a portion zone Central Business District conditional use. This is where the Garner Depot site uh, will be lo will be located. The baseball fields are zone R12 and retail sales indoor manufacturing. Because this is a conditional use request, the applicant has proposed to restrict the range of uses to the following. Under household living, townhome condos, upper story residential would be permissible. We have uses under community service educational facilities and services, health care, entertainment, restaurants. Also proposed under the retail sales and service category, we have banks, financial institutions, indoor retail sales, beauty hair salons, personal service uses, and indoor kennels and veterinarian uses, as well as indoor manufacturing. So this is a list of the proposed permissible uses. In addition to the proposed list of uses, the applicant has proposed the following conditions for the development. Each dwelling unit constructed on the property shall contain a minimum of 1,300 square feet of heated gross floor area. Each townhouse unit shall have at least a one car garage. The front facade of each townhome unit will include the following treatments. Number one, a covered entry. Number two, at least three operable windows and one entry door. Three, at least one two-foot horizontal offset per unit per every two units. 
and number four, garage doors with carriage hardware and windows. Next, each townhouse group defined as a building containing four to seven townhouse units shall include at least two of the following siding types in the front facade. Number one, board and batten. Two, horizontal left siding and or shake siding. Each townhouse group defined as a building containing four to seven townhouse units shall include at least two colors, not including trim on the front facade. Any vinyl siding used will be at least a minimum of 0 0.046 gauge. Number eight, all townhouse units shall have water table masonry at least 18 inches in height from finished floor elevation. Next, all residential building sites conserving, building on and conserving the existing character and also commercial development. And uh, the, the, the next uh, three are from the plan. Market a healthy brand that celebrates the local flair of Garner and emphasizes the town's positive evolution. This is page 58 of the plan. Also on page 58, the plan states encourage redevelopment and reuse of existing sites and buildings that are complementary to the surrounding area. And lastly, attract unique commercial establishments on page 68. The Garner Floor Plan uh, does show an opportunity sketch for this area. This is on pages 52 through 53. And the plan does show multifamily redevelopment west of the new recreation center with neighborhood commercial uh, businesses with, with frontage along West Main Street. So what's uh, being proposed with the commercial lot at the corner of West Main and Pearl Street with um, multifamily development uh, is consistent with uh, this part of the Garner Ford plan. I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. All right, thank you. Does any of the uh, Planning Commission members have any comments? Do I need to uh, do a roll call? You could yeah. you could individually go down the list. And okay, ask us. let's go with Ms. Avant. Do you have any uh, questions for town staff? No, I do not. Mr. Fox, do you have any questions or comments for town staff? Uh, yes, I do, Vaughn. Uh, David, how are the how are the town home and uh, commercial? parcels being treated differently as far as the zoning conditions are concerned? The zoning conditions really just apply to the town home development because there is a, a companion site plan that shows the uh, town home project. So there is not a site plan showing the commercial lot development at this time. So, 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 to, so to answer your question, the only conditions that would apply to the commercial lot would be the list of permissible uses. And, and that was uh, one thing I was curious about is that uh, the list of permissible uses would actually significantly increase the non-residential uses of the residential part of this subdivision um should the residential development not move forward correct that is correct okay with respect to the individual uh list of conditions 
uh, is there, I, I did not see it, I may have overlooked it, but I did not see it in the backup or the plans. Is there a size proposed for the one car garage or is that something I need to ask the applicant? You can ask the applicant. Uh, I do not believe there was a condition that specifically addressed that. Okay. And as with other uh, town home developments that we've gotten in, we've oftentimes had special architectural features proposed as part of the conditions, such as uh, a door transom, uh, a dormer, dormer gable on the front of the facade, those types of things. I presume since that's not listed, none of those are proposed. That would be correct. Um, I'm, I, I have not seen the the site plan package, so I don't know if there's any additional information in there. I, I did not see anything. Um, there were no elevations either. That would have helped a lot. And that was another question I was going to ask and possibly ask the applicant. I presume there's no elevations of the uh, type of pound home that might be proposed available. I don't have any information on on that. Okay. Right. Um, on condition 5D, it talks, well actually condition 5, it talks about the front facade of each townhouse unit and then it has uh, condition D which refers to garage doors with carriage hardware and windows. Uh, are there any front entry garage doors proposed for this development? I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. Thing. This is Stacy. There are not. They're all, the garages are all in the rear. Okay. Thank you. So maybe we just need to tweak that a little bit before it goes to council just to make sure it's not tied to the facade or the front of the, the building for, for clarity purposes. Um, on uh, condition eight, it says uh, vinyl siding <clears throat> is apparently the only material type that's being proposed. Is that correct? I do not know if that is the only material being proposed. The, the I believe the condition is if it's used, the minimum gauge must be 0 0.046, but no other materials are listed in the conditions. Okay. Maybe that's another one that the applicant could possibly help us with. Um, and then there was there no reference. The, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, this is Jeff. Um, there is the 18 or the water table feature, I believe, in the conditions. There, there is. Um, okay. I just know that, again, from past experience, we've had a lot of uh, different material alternatives beyond the water table. and. I just wanted to confirm that was not. There are no conditions that address that. Okay. And um, the plan states for a maximum 35 foot height of the buildings. The neighborhood meeting references two story a response from the applicant. So I'm assuming that these are just going to be two story and not higher. Do we know that? I don't have that information. The uh, maximum height would be controlled by the zoning district. Right, but I just, yeah. uh, but that seems that it could allow something bigger than two stories. So I just wanted to ask. And then finally, we had uh, 12 conditions in our backup. I think I only saw 11 on your presentation. Can we pull that back up and just see what may have been eliminated or um, renumbered? Right. So on, on my PowerPoint slide, number one would be the list of permissible uses. So uh, the number one on my PowerPoint is number two in your staff report. I'm sorry for the confusion. Uh, actually, uh, permitted use table is number one in our report. So. Right, it's number one in your report, but it's not number one in my 
PowerPoint. Okay. I, I think I've got... Um, so you just don't have a number, is what you're saying? Correct. Well, I have the numbering wrong. Okay. Um, I think that's all I had for, for staff. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Vira Hogan? No comment. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Philip Jefferson? No comment at the moment. And Mr. Michael Voiland. I have a question for the applicant. Uh, cover it then or now? All right, thank you. Okay, and then I guess we are complete with the zoning. We're moving to the site plans, is that correct? Okay. That's correct. I need to share my screen with you. Let me do that. Okay, y'all let me know when that pops up, if you would, please. I know sometimes it lags behind. It's up. Okay, thank you. Again, this is the subdivision plan conformity section of the presentation. 2.166 acres with 28 dwelling units and one non-residential lot. The tree coverage requirement of 14% is being met with new plantings. There are several uh, uh, perimeter and street buffers to kind of take into account with this um, project since it's divided by a roadway. But on the east side of Parker Street, that has only street buffers. It is bounded on all four sides by roadways. The west side of the development has two street buffers where those two boundaries are bounded by um, roadways. And then on the other side, you have um, four different measurements along those perimeters for buffers. Um, a 10 and a half foot buffer, which is a 30% reduction of a 15 foot buffer, a 35 foot buffer against single family, a 24.5% or 24.5 foot buffer, which is a 30% reduction of um, that was supposed to say 35 foot buffer, sorry about that. And an 8.75 foot buffer, which is a 30% reduction after allowance of half of the 25 foot buffer to be planted on each parcel, this parcel and the adjacent parcel. Street trees are provided approximately every 20 feet along public streets as required when using understory trees due to overhead power lines. Typically, you'll see that every 40 feet, and those are with overstory trees, but we do have an allowance to use the smaller trees where overhead power lines are present. 10% open space is required. They have provided 10.9% open space. And Parks and Rec um, did recommend a fee in lieu of parkland dedication for this site. The inspections department together with the fire department has reviewed and approved this plan. This site does not contain any FEMA designated <coughs> flood zone or way. For stormwater, this site is subject to stormwater quality requirements for nitrogen and quantity requirements for the one 10 and 25 year storm events. This development plan proposes a bioretention area to treat impervious surface for nitrogen and water quantity requirements. A nitrogen offset payment will also be required as part of this development. The site will be served with City of Raleigh public water and sewer that will, um, I'm sorry, that's a part of an old slide, copy and paste there. Um, you see the existing infrastructure there though that they will be using. For infrastructure, Pearl Street is currently paved from West Main to Parker and gravel south of Parker. The entire frontage will be widened to half of a local street section with curb, gutter, and sidewalk, 
and five additional feet of right of way will be dedicated. The site also has frontage on Parker Street, which will be improved to a local street section with five feet of additional right of way being dedicated. The northern set of townhomes will be served by a one-way um, public alley with entrance via a driveway on Parker Street and exit onto Main Street. And the southern set of townhomes will be served by a two-way public alley with a driveway on Pearl Street stubbing to the east. There you see the site plan um, with a couple of things pointed out. The bioretention area, which will be grassed and has some plantings in it um, with townhomes facing in that direction and then an alley that goes down um, the middle of those two sets of townhomes where you'll see rear entry for both of those sets of townhomes. And then your one-way alley road, I think that's B, I can't really make that out, roadway B going from Parker over and behind the townhome units to the guest parking and mail kiosk area as well as to the commercial lot to be developed later. Parking for um, each unit has their two spaces as required on their individual lot. Townhomes do also have an additional requirement for guest parking at a rate of one space per four units. Guest parking for this development is shared with the mail kiosk parking and parking for the commercial lot to be developed at a later date. There are 10 spaces required for guest and kiosk parking and 10 spaces are required. Lighting for the parking lot meets the requirements of the UDO as well as staff recommendations for LED lighting. The street lighting will be reviewed at construction drawing submittal. The 2018 Garner Forward Transportation Plan does not call for improvements along Main, Parker, or Pearl Streets. Therefore, with the noted improvements, these plans may be considered consistent with the recommendation of the 2018 plan. This project site does not fall within a land acquisition area for the Parks, Recreation, Open Space, and Greenways Master Plan. Therefore, with the fee in lieu of parkland dedication, this project, as proposed, may be found in conformity with the Parks and Recreation, Open Space, and Greenways Master Plan. After sufficient review and plan revisions, staff on this project, as now proposed, conforms to the regulations of the Unified Development Ordinance so long as the following project specific conditions are met. One, prior to receipt of approved plans, engineering department inspection fees must be paid to the town of Garner. Two, prior to recordation of the first final plat, documents establishing an HOA and restrictive covenants shall be submitted to the planning director for review. Prior to issuance of the first building permit, all applicable water and sewer fees must be paid to the city of Raleigh Public Utilities Department and the stormwater program administrator shall be in receipt of proof of payment for the required nitrogen offset payment to an approved mitigation bank. Four, prior to the issuance of each building permit, a fee in lieu of parkland dedication shall be paid to the town. And five, the developer shall be responsible for all roadway improvements. We do have recommended motions in um, section eight. I'll be happy to answer any questions that I might have, and the applicant is also um, in the meeting with us as well for your questions. All right, thank you. We will begin with the um, questions from the Plant Commission to the town staff. After that, we will um, have the presentation by the applicant as well as others in support or in opposition. So. Let's go ahead and begin with our Planning Commission's comments for town staff, if we have any. We can go ahead and begin with uh, Ms. Avant. I do not have any comments or questions. Thank you. Mr. Fox. Um, if we could, Mr. Mal, if I could uh, go later, that would be great. I'm still trying to pull a few things together. Are you saying that you want me to come back to you in a minute? Yes, if okay. you would. Okay. Uh, Ms. Vyra Hogan. 
No comment. Mr. Philip Jefferson? Uh, yes. Um, um, Stacy, on the south side of the town house development, um, the public alley is a 20, is that a 20 foot roadway or 25 foot roadway, roadway that's shown there? Sorry, I was trying to see if I could zoom in and see as well. Um, I think it is 20 feet. Okay. Um, and the two parking spaces, I'm assuming that one parking space is considered the actual garage and the other is the driveway of the garage, I mean, of the, of the, of the house, is that right? Or are there actual two spaces to park outside of the garage? To be counted in their garage. <clears throat> Um, and this may be a question for the applicant, um, uh, just to clarify how the garage accesses the actual interior of the unit, if that is being accessed from inside the garage, stepping up into the unit, or is there an access point? But I, I'm assuming that that's, that, that will be the case. They are not showing these as detached garages. So um, they'll be on in a second for you to ask that, but I'm assuming that it, they will be accessed from the inside of the garage if you're accessing from the rear, okay. since there are no um, detached garages. Um, and then um, on the east side of the road A, which is between the south um, set of units, uh, the entrances from Pearl Street, once a car reaches the end of Road A, the only way out is to back out. Is that correct? I know this is only a, assuming it's a, just a private entrance, but it does is a public public alleyway. So there is that fire lane in between the two groups of townhomes right there. Um, that it's a turnaround point. Okay. It's in the, like the middle of the block. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have for now. Okay, thank you. Mr. Michael Voilin. Yes, just for clarification, the bio retention device is basically just a grassed open space. It is, um, as far as for appearances, um, if you want, Leah is also on the call, if you would like her to explain more how that will function. Um, sure, if I'm done quickly, just for my edification or maybe others. Sure, um, hi, this is Leah. I don't have a camera, I'm sorry, but um, so it will be, an actual bioretention device that's designed per the minimum design criteria put forth by the state. Um, there's a, those can be designed either grassed or planted. So this one will be grassed um, basically that way with the grass and they'll have some more aesthetic plantings kind of surrounding the bioretention. They can use it as an open space yard area as well, but it will be designed to be a functioning bioretention device. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Let's see. I believe we have all the comments from the um, or concerns um, addressed or questions to town staff at this time. Um, the next item is for Hi. the presentation. Yes. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Dean Fox, I forgot about you. Thanks. <laughs> if, if I could uh, just ask a few questions, Stacy. Um, if I do the math correctly, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, if the commercial lot is removed from the K-12 
calculation, it appears that the maximum number of townhome lots based on 3,000 foot uh, minimum area would only allow 27 units. Are we allowing the commercial lot to be factored into the density calculations for the townhomes? Yes, I believe we're using the overall acreage for that. Okay. Um, do we have any idea, going back to one of Mr. Jefferson's questions, do we have any idea of what the plans are for the 25 foot alleyway through the southern track as far as the possibility of extending it further east towards Montague or is it anticipated that that is definitely going to be a dead end? I don't have any further information about the development of it. Um, Jeff, do you have anything on that? Um, I believe that we felt when we were discussing this with them that eventually it would connect perhaps to another um, another teed alleyway behind any development that would front on to Montague um, or at least provide another way out um, but servicing development that would front on Montague and need rear access um, from there, much like Main Street. Okay, well, that in, with that information in mind, our, our downtown plan currently calls for non-residential on that side of Montague. I know it's just a, a best guess at this point in time, but are we comfortable having a, a street go through and connect like that to a potential non-residential development? I know I asked about that with Minglewood townhomes. Uh, project and hoping that we could get that connection. I was told uh, in one respect that, that was not really something that we would want to do. So we're kind of in the same situation here, uh, Minglewood with a shopping center <clears throat> here with possible non-residential development on Montague. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the Minglewood discussion. Uh, I know that's something that we initially pushed for at staff level. Um, so I'm, I can't really recall who said that. Well, the <laughs> um, thing that I believe was the discussion with Minglewood, I do know that we pushed for that. The shopping center did not want that connection. They would not grant the folks at Minglewood the shopping center connection. Right. David, did you have something you wanted to add? No, that was it. The uh, we asked for it, but the shopping center couldn't get their group to come to an agreement for the street connection. Okay. And so we asked for the for the pedestrian connection. Right. And so the town does control those three parcels at, at the end of the alleyway. So um, with that with that provision being made now, we would insist on whoever the town turns that property over to you to incorporate the alley accordingly. Okay. Um, similarly, do we have any idea of what the Lions Club is proposing to do with their property? Uh, I, and I'll get to why I'm asking that next. But. <clears throat> well, I have no information on what they're planning. No. We, we do not at this time. Uh, Mr. Hodges has been in some discussions with them, but nothing, there's been no decision on their part as to what they want to do with their property at this time. Okay. Um, the alleyway that's along the northern tract that actually runs between uh, Parker, right, or Pearl Parker and uh, Main Street, um, that's a very narrow alleyway. Is is that going to involve uh, garbage or EMS access, anticipated access along that alley? It will be for the um, trash service, but. Public Works has reviewed that and they are fine with the width of the alley. Okay, and um, 
Is there any reason, uh, obviously it's gonna take away from opportunity on Main Street if we allow this to connect through uh, to Main Street, is there any reason that this cannot go through the, the parking lot at the northern end of the townhome site, southern end of the commercial lot, and uh, not continue on up to Main Street? There's just a lot of uh, potential issues with that, limitations of on-street parking in the future on Main Street if needed. Uh, conflict with pedestrian use of Main Street sidewalk, that type of thing. What that looked at? I don't have anything on that, Leah. Do you have any comment? Um, I mean, I don't know that we necessarily looked at the alternative of restricting access to Main Street and directing them through the parking area. Um, if we're planning on doing, you know, trash pickup through that public alley, I don't know that them going through their private parking area would be desirable. Um, I think having that kind of public, even though it's just an alley, but having that public link out to Main Street was, gave us a little more flexibility. Um, also, the if I interpret the information correctly, we are saying that these lots will have, the residential townhome lots will have zero front setbacks and between zero and 15 feet maximum rear yard setbacks. Is that correct? That's correct. That's established by the underlying zoning district. Um, being the CBD. Um, and, and is that tied to the text amendment that we just did a month or so ago? Is that what we're trying to tie it to? Yes, there were some text amendments that went ahead of this to, um, project that it would work in that in that way yes well, well I know the text amendment mandated a minimum of five foot front yard setback and that was based on a 20 foot rear yard setback for enabling somebody to park mm -hmm. off right of away um, 15 feet seems a little too tight in the rear yard and I, I'm not sure where we can uh, Prove or where we base the zero foot front yard setback um, other than that. So I could use some help clarification on that. They have a 20 foot rear setback on these plans. I think there might have been an error on that. Okay. To accommodate cars parking in the driveway. And then the text amendment showed a five, yard, a five foot minimum front yard setback for CBD specific to townhomes. So I'm not sure where can we allow a zero foot setback. And it, uh, that one appears to be five feet. Let me um, check on that. I can check on that while the applicant is speaking as well. Okay. And then finally, um, on Pearl Street, we show a altered uh, typical section for a typical local street. What did we require for the depot property right across the street? I know it was future and not a part of the initial phase, but do you know what we were requiring typical section wise there? Because uh, it, it doesn't seem like we're maximizing our uh, right of way with this altered uh, typical section that we're allowing on the townhome side. So what we've required here is it's the same street width as in our 
a typical section for the local street. It is five feet less right of way than what we would typically require, which we decided on because of the limited space in the downtown area. Um, but it will still have the same pavement width and um, curb and gutter and everything as a, as a normal local section would. Well, if we do the math, uh, we're, we're looking at uh, a right of way of 25 feet, a distance center line to back of curb of 14 and a half feet. So that leaves us 10 and a half feet from back of curb to the right of way line. But we're, the main thing I'm concerned about is the reduction in the utility strip between the curb and the sidewalk and trying to get a better understanding of why we're doing that. Because if we're reducing that, we're actually allowing or, or proposing to have let me do the math real quick in my head here. About three feet of right of way, unused right of way on the backside of the sidewalk. And that just, uh, I just, I'm not following the purpose of that. Um, I, be I believe the purpose was we um, just came to an agreement to allow the shortening of that to accommodate kind of the restriction the restricted conditions downtown um looking at kind of being able to fit that strip of townhomes um along pearl street there like you just mentioned the setbacks i think were reduced from what is typical uh, and then we we basically were willing to reduce the utility strip to what we thought was feasible because we know that there's limited space in that downtown area um, to give more of that kind of on street uh, close to the to the sidewalk type of feel that the downtown is intended to have. Yeah. And Jeff might be able to speak to that a little bit on a holistic level as well. I believe some of the, the other things that came into discussion was having enough room for street trees as well. If you're dividing it up between front yard and utility strip, um, it doesn't give you much space to actually get get us tree in. Hmm. Okay. Well, I know we've looked at some planned residential developments and had similar concerns about that on some of those. And I don't believe we altered the typical section for the public streets along those properties, but uh, a two and a half foot offset from back of curve to the sidewalk is allowable old NCDOT standard, but uh, uh, really, that um, that's that's not something. Just like the alleyway behind, with a 12 foot width, uh, you're going to have people parking on the side of that alleyway, and then it's going to be next to impossible for the garbage trucks or uh, or emergency vehicles if they need to get through there to get through. If we were planning on doing something with the Lions Club property, um, possibly allowing things to shift and widen out to their site in the future and widen that alleyway out, then I might not be as concerned about it. But uh, that uh, those two things are of concern. And, you know, this is really a place where on-street parking is. If there ever is a place uh, that on-street parking would be preferable, um, this would be it. And so as far as uh, Pearl Street, it, it's, uh, kind of interesting that we're not trying to push for that. I believe we did with the depot site. And so I, I was just curious how this matched with the depot site. I don't think I ever got an answer to that. Did we know what the depot site was gonna be required to do? Um, I don't remember right off if we had modified uh, the section along the depot site as well. Um, that's I, I can take a look back at it. Uh, okay. I did um, take a look, and they do have a five foot front setback on their plans. Great, thank you. And did we verify? We, we did verify the 20 foot on the rear. Yes, that's correct. We did. OK. And Stacy, all the questions I asked David about the conditions and the zoning, would those be better sent to the applicant or do you want to weigh in on any of the other ones? Um, 
that I have? Um, I don't have any comments on the conditions themselves. So yes, I would definitely ask the applicant about that. Okay, thanks. That's all I have, Mr. Mao. All right, thank you. I just have a general question. Um, and it has to do with the uh, traffic movement as well as <clears throat> this is near the baseball area. Um, or is the town staff um, concerned with any noise ordinances late into the night? I don't have a good idea of when the baseball games would end. And if it ends, there's bound to be traffic movement all all around this area. Is there a uh, traffic mitigation or some kind of a sign put up that says no street parking? Or is there some kind of a um, control about what time noise needs to be quieted down? It's, it's just a general concern of that nature. What's, what's the thinking of um, the town staff um, in, in controlling this situation? So, Mr. Mao, I would just note that there's residential here already, um, and there's residential on the other side of, of the fields as well. Um, so it's a... I'm not sure of the, all of the exact specifics for the operations, but it's suffice it to say that it's kind of an existing condition, and um, I think it's been pretty well, pretty well monitored and handled. And the folks at uh, the baseball, they're they're operating within the applicable rules. Um, so there's no, you know, parking is limited on Pearl Street already. Uh, they do have some overflow behind the uh, depot for parking. Um, there's parking further down Pearl Street as well. So, um, yeah, I'm not necessarily sure of all the specifics that apply, but just to note that it is is an existing situation that is seems to be working in harmony right now, and that um, there are hours of operations uh, that would govern the lights and things of that nature. All right, thank you. Okay, we are moving on to the next portion, which is presentation by the applicant. Does the applicant want to uh, say anything or present anything to the Planning Commission? Good evening, this is Beth Blackman with Simmons Group. Uh, 113 Lager Lane, Garner, North Carolina. I um, just want to say thank you to staff and to the Planning Commission for hearing this and all the questions. We worked through a lot of these issues with staff. It, it's very challenging when you have a very skinny site with a lot of existing roadway frontage um, trying to work out and fit anything in usable. And the town was very helpful in trying to um brainstorm and have ideas to to make this a uh, a viable site for now and in the future sure i'll turn on my camera um so we um you know we went through this process worked with town and we will um i wanted to a couple of questions architecture wise we the developer is on, but they uh, own the property already. They are more looking for what could they do with this and do not have a, a builder or actual elevations in mind right at this moment. It's more of trying to set up zoning conditions that would be appealing for the downtown area. Um, Dean, you mentioned about the uh, rear, the garage doors. Uh, when we talk through the conditions, I, I noticed that it's kind of a default condition because you're expecting to have front entry garages, and that's not always the case. And so, uh, and then the other question about um, 
the rear patio area, because they are rear load garages, there isn't a, a patio area. The rear is basically your driveway. The, um, but the front, uh, you mentioned the transom and the side lights, because normally we add, those get asked for or get added because you also have a garage door and that takes up most of your front. These um, will have just a front door, you know, and a, and a front window kind of as a normal house look without a large garage door taking up space. So it should be more appealing visually without having to add the, the transom and the side lights in. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else you asked that I could go ahead and answer now in advance, but I'm here. Uh, Keith Roberts is on the phone. He had some technical difficulties and couldn't uh, log in, but he is on the phone and uh, the developer is here as well. All right, thank you. Anybody else who wants to speak on the behalf of the applicant? Hey, Beth, this is Byron. Just one quick question. What's the price point? I'm sorry, you said price point? Yes. Um, that's another thing. I don't know that we know. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult to build anything. Um, nowadays, all the building prices have gone up. So I don't know that, that um, the developers have an idea quite the second. Uh, it would it would be sort of market rate, whatever kind of fits in with that area. I know we had a neighbor reach out and she was excited about you know new development. She had bought her house and was in doing improvements to it and stuff like that. So we definitely want to add value to the neighborhood. Um, but I'll let the developer if he has any ideas. But like I said, we haven't even really picked out. They haven't picked out uh, you know floor plans or anything yet. So it's hard to say. You, Beth, you can try to help me answer that. Just. Yeah, Paul, if you just want to introduce yourself. Uh, Paul Flaherty, uh, 793 Balmoral Street, Clayton. Uh, I'm on, myself and Towton Art are, uh, bought the property a long time ago, and we're excited to uh, finally see the redevelopment project that we we're hoping we're going to happen, and we're, we're glad to finally see it happen. We're, we appreciate like Beth said, the town working with us, it's, it's a small site, but uh, once again, we're really excited to bring something new to downtown. And as far as the price point, uh, it's like Beth was saying, we're just not real sure right now. On a, it will probably be in that, and this is kind of guessing, that 250 to 275 range. I mean, we're trying to, um, you know, keep it, affordable as we can given today the building expense you know what it costs to build nowadays thank you all right thank you uh mr mal this is uh philip jefferson i have a a question um, regarding um, building materials is um, uh, is there any has there been any discussion with the developer about uh, adding brick to the material component options as opposed to just board and batten siding and horizontal siding considering that this is a type of urban infill for a downtown central business district and, I'd kind of like to hear the, the the reasonings or thoughts behind only suggesting that the materials would only have a 18 inch masonry water table and no more additional material that might be brick or masonry. Well, here again, we have not. Um decided we've not partnered up with a builder. We hadn't talked to a builder. We were just trying to take one step at a time. Um, so that's one reason we don't have any elevations at this point or, or have not come up with the final decision as far as the exterior trim. Okay. Um, I'd like to, for us to, to, to kind of keep the uh, conversation about 
uh, infill in uh, an area like a downtown to think about how it matches some of the downtown character of perhaps there is brick um, on, 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 as part of the exterior as opposed to just a standard kind of water table. Since this is not um, a, a site that is just in outside of a business district, um, but it is mixing with an existing context. That being said, also not knowing what the site plan would be for the exist for the new commercial lot, um, I guess the question also would be how would the materiality of the townhomes match the materiality of the uh, commercial unit facing Main Street? Has that been part of a discussion yet at all or thought process about? That, that relationship between the commercial um, component and the residential component material-wise? Uh, once again, it, it, we hadn't gotten that far, but I would imagine the commercial building would be uh, all either brick or block, um, you know, whatever would be acceptable to the town of Garner. Okay. All right, thank you. I'll just run down the list real quick of the Planning Commission members to see if anybody has any more questions to the applicant. Um, uh, Mr. Oh, Ms. Avant? I do not. Mr. Fox? Yes, uh, yeah, this question is probably for you. Uh, can you explain to me a little bit about the 12 foot one way alley? Um, the, the typical section shown on the plans uh, show a 20 foot uh, paved, 25 foot back to back if it's curved, but doesn't show any details about what your thought was about how that 12 foot width would work. Can you give me a little? Insight as to are you going to have any kind of paved shoulders or any kind of usable area other than that 12 foot paved width? So, yes, the, the one alley is the standard um, Garner street design for an alley uh, with curb and gutter. The and the other one as well has um, it's going to be um, curb on one side. I totally. So we can have all drainage only on one side. It's going to be super elevated. Totally lost the word for a second. Um, so that uh, pavement width was worked out with uh, with Chris Johnson to determine what was adequate amount of actual pavement, uh, and then there will be the 20 foot driveway outside of the uh, outside of the right of way width, you know, which is a foot or so behind the curb. So it looked like even with that narrow width that you're still going to have to do some grading, at least from the plans. I know it's still probably preliminary and you don't know for certain, but you may have to encroach onto the Lions Club property a little bit, even to get a 12 foot wide uh, alleyway on there. So um, I understand it's a tight, tight fit. The curb is going to be on the building side or on the Lions Club side? Um, I'm relatively certain it is on the building side, but let me flip to the grading sheet. Sure. That would make me feel a little bit better about it because it, you know, it'll make it harder for people just to park on the side of the street on that side. Um, hopefully, I'm yeah. pretty certain that is correct. This is Leah. Okay. We did that intentionally? Right. We drained it all to to your side. Right, and and that, you know, as far as the grading, it is preliminary. Hopefully, we can work out everything without having to encroach or we can work something out with the Lions Club because you know in all honesty this could be very beneficial for a redevelopment or working out something with with their site when the time comes um, and yes uh, there's great yes it's, it is the curb is on the building side and so all the storm drainage is on the building side okay and did you ever consider taking the alleyway and connecting it to the the parking lot and having to exit out onto back out onto Pearl instead of coming out on Main Street. That never came up. Um, 
we did not consider that. We talked about which direction the alley should go and which made the most sense. And, and Mr. Treesenberg asked for the exit for you to leave the site onto Main Street so that would not cause traffic turning into the site from Main Street, if that made sense. Um, and so that would make it more of a, a, a smoother, people wouldn't be entering there and backing up traffic on Main Street was, was the only thought process that we had, we had talked about. Okay. And one question I probably should have asked staff, but I'll go ahead and ask you. Um, I don't think there's any plans to extend Pearl Street, so there, there's no turnaround or anything for that proposed for this development. Is, has that been talked about? And well, so when we were discussing the orientation of which way these town, the lower section of the townhomes faced, you know, whether they faced Parker or they faced Pearl, we actually talked about facing them to Pearl. Um, the reason why we turned uh, the idea was to use this alley as a turnaround for Pearl Street. Um, so it's a relatively short distance that, uh, you know, most vehicles will back up 150 feet. So the alley now acts as the turnaround for Pearl Street. The 25 foot proposed alley between the two townhome? Correct. Okay. So anybody that went down Pearl Street, got all the way to the end, they could back up and turn around in the alley without having to back all the way up to Parker Street. Okay. Or, or turn around and somebody's driving. And you were asking before about any other questions that you may not have addressed. So yeah, I can't remember if I got them all. Uh, there's a couple more. The size of the garage. So I'm, I'm assuming it's almost got to be a one car garage with each of the units. So do we have so an idea? We are, are setting it at a minimum as a one car garage. Rear load townhomes can actually be two car garage at this width because basically the back is just the garage. Um, that would depend on what plan the developer ended up with. So minimum of one car, but it could actually potentially be two cars. Okay. Uh, we, have, we have done other developments that had a, a 20 foot townhome that had a two car garage. Okay. But I would imagine one car. And I noticed in the public meeting uh, minutes that it was answered to one of the local residents that it, they are going to be just two story. Yes, we've never talked about. Um, I got where you were going with that as soon as you said it. You know, the more urban um, three story look. Exactly. We never discussed that. Um, and I actually don't know what the building height limit is for the central business district. Um, so staff might could help out with that, but I don't think um, price point wise the three car was, I mean three the three story was really talked about. Okay. Right. If I can jump in, that's that's correct. We earlier you mentioned price, and we go up a third story. That's going to kind of take away from the the mind thought of trying to keep it in, in a, that affordable range. That, that makes sense. Uh, I, I was thinking just like Leo, I, I'm sorry, just like uh, Beth was alluding to is that if there was ever a place to be able to go more upward, that this would probably be it. So uh, I just wanted to get a clear understanding of that. Your plans called for a 35 foot height max. And so that would lend itself to be maybe a little bit more than, than two story. I just want to make sure. And, and that is kind of a standard. I will say that's a pretty much a standard note for everything that we normally would do because that is usually the max height for any development district we're working in in Garner, but I have not worked in the central business district before, so. Okay. The, the central business district doesn't have any height restrictions. Okay. I mean, we can certainly strike that note. It's just a, a note in the site data table. It's not like we're, it was a zoning condition. Okay. And, and getting back to the Pearl Street typical section, um, you know, downtowns a lot of times will actually have sidewalk all the way out to the curb. And uh, having just a little tiny strip there lends itself to a lot of 
opportunity for challenges with other uh, things finding their way into that little strip. Particularly if you have on-street parking, that's going to be a problem potentially if you start putting street lighting poles or things of that nature in that that strip and then decide to have on-street parking there later. So um, if are there any reservations that you or the developer might have about possibly altering the sidewalk section and, and actually paving all the way to the curb if that's something that uh, staff would be supportive of? And by paving, I mean sidewalk. Um, I don't know that we have a, a preference about, uh, I would have said more like shifting the sidewalk to the back of the curb. Uh, usually you make it like a foot wider when you put it behind, right behind the curb. But I know in our conversations with the engineering department, they were trying to maintain their utility strip because a lot of other things go in that utility strip. Okay. But, I think we would be flexible if, uh, but we, we discussed the road setback exactly with the engineering department. Okay. It's just a lot of right of way behind that sidewalk that uh, uh, it does seem like the sidewalk, if anything, could go back a little bit more. I realize the five foot setback. So, so you can confirm too the five foot front yard setback, 20 foot rear yard setback. So these units are shown at a five foot setback and the driveway is 20 feet long so that builds you in a, a 20 foot uh, rear setback even though technically from the i think when we first started talking about this the central business district had the zero and 15 and the zero for the front but that may have been updated with with the text amendment y'all just did okay i think that's everything i had thanks mr mount all right, thank, thank you, Mr. Fox. Ms. Vera Hogan. No comment. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Michael Voilin. No, my question about the price points was answered. Thank you, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else who want to speak? Um, in support of this project. Hearing none, um, is there uh, anybody who wants to speak in opposition to the request of this project? Hearing none, um, I believe let's go ahead and have questions from final questions from the planning commission to both the applicant and or town staff at this time. I will go down the list. Um, this is our final comment, so I encourage our planning commission members to voice any concerns or comments that they may have. Ms. Uh, Avant. I have none. Thank you. Mr. Fox? No. Thank you. Ms. Hogan? No comment. Ms. Hogan, did you say none? That's correct. No comment. Thank you. Mr. Jefferson? Um, I just have a couple of comments. Um, I do agree with Mr. Fox's question about the um, sidewalk width. Um, I think when we begin to create infill uh, housing like this in a central business district, which we hopefully eventually will grow, um, that front um, sidewalk becomes the, in a way, the outside and the, in the entryway of the, of the street and of the, of the unit. Um, that's a gathering space as well for a unit, for, 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 for the um, uh, occupants. Um, it becomes a, a wider space to be accessible. So um, uh, I think it's important for us to think about that as, a, as an extension of the unit in the kind of urban context, uh, or small urban context. 
Um, also, material-wise, I know that there's, there's a price point involved in um, thinking about materials, but I think when we begin to insert into the business, the central business district, the materiality of the exterior also needs to, I think, really be thought of. And I, I have a little bit of a problem with us only thinking about the material as two of three um, materiality options of board and bat and horizontal um, lap siding and shake siding. Um, I think when we get into a business district like this, we need to think about masonry component brick as well. So I would make a suggestion that that material is at least added to that as part of an option for the exterior um, to begin to match with the context of the downtown. Um, and that's, that's all I'll, I'll add. Thank you. Mr. Voiland? I have nothing further. Okay. With that, I believe I'm moving this back to the Planning Commission. We will have comments in general to the Planning Commission about this, and then we will move to vote by the Planning Commission. And I will go down the list again. Um, these are comments in general to the Planning Commission for uh, discussion purposes, if there's, if there is any. Uh, Ms. Avant? No, I have none. Mr. Fox? I'd like to commend the developer and staff in uh, uh, setting up something that matches very closely to what all the downtown plans, the uh, latest comprehensive plan update as far as a site, um, uh, idea of what could go along this area it matches almost perfectly to that i do have as you could tell uh, a few concerns about the design specifics but the intent and the use um, I'm, I'm very uh, complimentary of and i appreciate the efforts to to do what the plans call for thank you miss hogan no further comments. Mr. Jefferson? I have. No comment, Mr. Jefferson? I have no, addi no additional comments besides what I have already recommended. All right, thank you. Mr. Marco Voidlin? I have nothing else. Thank you. Okay. I believe at this time we have uh, completed our comments at the Planning Commission. Let's move on to the motions. We are going to have motions about the zoning and about the site plans. Can I have a motion to recommend approval or disapproval of the request zoning to the Town Council? I move that the Planning Commission accept the staff statements regarding zoning consistency with the Garner Ford Comprehensive Plan being detailed in Section 5 of this report as their own and recommend approval of CUD Z2009, which includes the conditions stated in Section 3 of this report to the Town Council. Thank you. Can I have a second motion, please? This is Michael Voiland. I will second that. Thank you. Then the zoning, um, let's see. Oh, let's have a vote, All right? Okay, let's go on to vote. Uh, Ms. Avant? Aye. Mr. Fox? Aye. Ms. Hogan? Aye. Mr. Jefferson? Aye. Mr. Voiland? Aye. And Mr. Moore, which is an I. All right, then the zoning is approved. Let's move on to the next item, which is the site subdivision plan. Can I have a motion to recommend approval or disapproval of the request site plan to the town council? Mr. Moore, before, this is Dean Fox, before we take a motion, could I ask staff one question? Sure. Um, 
would we need to add a sixth condition for an agreement for cross access for use of the parking spaces between the commercial property and the townhome property? I don't think so. Do you, Jeff? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it probably should be recorded once with the subdivision since it is going to be shared. Depending, I guess it depends on exactly where the property line is. I don't have the plans right in front of me. This is seen again. It, it goes right down the middle of the parking lot. That that was the concern I had. Yeah, then I would I would just add that to be recorded. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, we are moving to the site uh, subdivision plan. Can I have a motion to recommend approval or disapproval of the request site subdivision plan to the town council? Mr. Jefferson, I move that the Planning Commission confirm staff's finding in Section 7, that's CUP SB 2007, Pearl Street Townhomes, is in conformity with adopted town plans and policies so long as the six project specific conditions identified therein are met. Thank you. Can I have a second motion? This is Gina. All right, thank you. Then we are moving to our vote. I will go down the list. Ms. Avant? Aye. Mr. Fox? Aye. Ms. Hogan? Aye. Mr. Jefferson? Aye. Mr. Voylin? Aye. And Mr. Moore, which is an I. Okay, then with this, it's um, the motion is carried to have the zoning and the site subdivision plan to move to the town council for their consideration. Thank you. And with this, I yield the floor back to Mr. Chairman John Belasco. I thank you, Mr. Mao. I appreciate that. Um, with that, our next agenda item would be the um, UDO text amendments for the uh, UDO 20-02, Chapter 160D Implementation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, Commission members. I don't have a formal presentation for you tonight as we introduced this back in, I believe it was November. Um, been giving you hopefully plenty of time to try to absorb uh, the amendments that are being proposed to help implement uh, the chapter 160D uh, changes that are required with that statutory amendment. Um, so I believe you have an amended staff report uh, in your packets with a recommended motion from us. Um, I know I'm sure that there's probably those some questions. Thank you to those of you who sent some questions out in advance. Um, but we're here to answer any questions, remaining ones that you may have. Uh, if you've noted anything that needs to be corrected, uh, we will continue to be tracking these um, in a memo format for the town council when we go back to them. Uh, so with that being said, um, we'll just, uh, see if you all have any questions and we'll do our best to respond to those. Um, I've got David and Gabby here still with me and of course Brian is there with you. Uh, Gabby and David will kind of help me navigate uh, the, the drafts if we need to pull up anything on screen and um, with that I'll turn it back to you Mr. Chair. Thank you Jeff, much appreciated. Um, I think all my questions were addressed in our previous uh, communication. So I will go through the rest of the 
commission to see if there's any questions or comments. Ms. Avent, do you have any questions or comments for Jeff? I do not. Ms. Hogan? No comments. Mr. Voiland? Uh, my only comment is I thought the staff did a terrific job. Thank you. Mr. Jefferson? I have none. Mr. Fox? Uh, I feel guilty, but I've got to ask at least one. So. <laughs> well, we wouldn't expect anything less of you, Dean. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Um, Jeff, I just, I, I've got to ask, um, please confirm uh, the recommendations on who reviews and comments on the various types of plans that we would see and council would see are due to mandates by the general statute change to 160D and not merely staff recommendations. In other words, the fact that 90% of the stuff that we will see will now go away, that is all mandated by general statute 160D and not uh, a just a preference from staff. Right, so I, th I, I believe I know <laughs> what, you, what you're getting at. Um, so things that are special use permits um, that will be quasi-judicial, um, those will no longer be coming to planning commission because of that uh, purely quasi-judicial realm and uh, not having discussions of those cases outside of, of those hearings. Um, that's been a extremely questionable practice in the past and so um, that has been reinforced I think with the language still in 160D so on the advice of, of those involved um, we will be sticking with just taking those to town council. Uh, however, anything that still involves a rezoning, um, whether it be general or conditional, and so most things will be going through uh, that conditional process, um, even prior to, say, going to a special use permit. Um, in order for a project just to go straight to that special use permit process, the zoning is going to have to be in place. Um, so that will continue to probably be more the exception than the rule as it is now. Um, so planning commission will still be involved in the, the all of the zoning aspects, which by and large will precede um, any of those special use permits. And you'll see, you'll see more attention to, uh, to the site plans in those cases because then uh, the site plan itself will be a condition of the zoning. Um, so it won't be as simple for folks to, I guess, amend those site plans. So they're gonna have to do a little extra, little extra effort on the front end to, to be discussing those because amending those or modifying those will be, be a little more tightly controlled in what will have to go back through, uh, through a whole new, hearing um so yeah that that kind of that kind of summarizes it we're we're no longer doing the the mixed cases it will be strictly one or the other um and y'all will be continually uh involved in the the legislative side of that as a legislative recommending body okay thank you and and it appears that a lot of the things that we may have been involved with or maybe in council are now going to be going to the board of adjustment instead and so um right. similar so, with that that's that's all state statute mandate versus yeah your your board of adjustment is is the ones that are charged with doing the interpretation so a lot of the stuff in particular that was left to uh, staff to have a lot of administrative leeway um, that is being tightened up um, and so if, if folks really want to pursue some of that leeway if it's if it's more open-ended 
uh, they will have to go to the Board of Adjustment now to, in order to get that leeway. All right, Mr. Fox, any further questions? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mattel? Yeah. Uh, I have no comment. I just want to compliment the town staff and all everyone that worked on this UDO um, text that uh, I believe all the topics has been well thought of and has been uh, well discussed. And I look forward to the final product when all this will be put into practice. So I, I guess the test is when we put this stuff into the practice and how well it actually gets uh, incorporated or how the process is uh, being completed at that time. Um, but I think we will going to have a good product. So I think uh, the town has done an excellent job as well as working with all every one of us, including I, and so I appreciate uh, everybody's time. All right, thank you. Um, Jeff, just a quick question. Could you just um, reiterate kind of the timeline moving forward between not only 160D, but also the other portion of this? Because, um, well, yeah, if you could reiterate the uh, timeline, please. Sure, sure. Um, so as you noted, um, there is, this is just, this was a part of a, a, a larger rewrite project. Um, so this portion that will be moving towards adoption now really addresses a lot of the procedural uh, corrections that needed to be made. Um, all of the, the substantive uh, how things look, <laughs> uh, that is still yet to come. Um, so for this portion of, of getting the procedural steps in place, we are hoping to have uh, this adopted by council uh, at their first meeting in March. Uh, and that will hopefully allow us to kind of make a clean break. Um, we do not anticipate having any of the mixed quasi-judicial items on your agenda next month in order to kind of help facilitate that. Uh, next month, you all will just be seeing uh, legislative type items. Um, the intent would be is that come that first uh, meeting in March for the council, if it is adopted, uh, we'll kind of we'll ask anybody who's in mid review to file new uh, paperwork for their applications, uh, just acknowledging that when they do get to the public portions of their review that they'll be going through the new process. Uh, there won't be any change in fees or anything like that. So um, it should be fairly seamless. Um, we would just ask again, of course, the, those first few months, please have patience uh, with us as we also are getting used to doing things a little different, uh, but hopefully it will be much much clearer for all of the boards involved as to what their roles are um, and what kind of process you need to conduct uh, your meetings in and um, will hopefully be a good thing for all involved. Thank you. And, and what's the general timeline on the development standards update? Yes, so we're still on track um, working with the folks at Stewart. Um, we've uh, got a few We'll be back to regular monthly meetings with the steering committee starting at the end of this month. I think we've got a meeting coming up on the fourth Thursday of this month. And we're targeting fourth quarter of this year still in 2021. Um, so we'll see in particular how the next few months go uh, and see if we can keep that, keep that on track. All right, thank you. Um, I think that concludes all questions and comments. So. If there is a motion out there, would someone please share? John, this is Byra. I'll make the motion. Um, the recommendation is staff support submitment as presented and recommends approval of UDO text amendment 2002 UDO 2002. Possible amendments will be tracked and highlighted for the final town council decision. 
All right, thank you, Ms. Hogan. Is there a second? Mike, Mike Foyle and I'll second. Thank you, sir. Brian, I'd like to do the roll call, please. All right, the motion on the, on the floor by Ms. Hogan is to recommend approval of UDO 20-02. I will call the vote. John Blasco? Aye. Vang Mao? Aye. Gina Avon? Aye. Dean Fox? Aye. Vira Hogan? Aye. Philip Jefferson? Aye. Michael Voiland? Aye. All right, thank you. Sounds like we have a unanimous recommendation um, on, on the UDO text amendment. All right, moving forward, we have up next the report from the planning director. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I do apologize. I tend to pull these together uh, in, in the afternoon here prior to the meeting, and I've had a kind of extended uh, family happening uh, that has occurred recently. So I didn't get that information pulled specifically together. Uh, but I would, if you all have any questions on anything specific that has happened since your last meeting, I'll be glad to answer any quick questions on those. All right. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so any questions for Jeff? We'll start with Mr. Mao. No, I do not. Mr. Jefferson? I do not. Mr. Hoyland? I think we missed that one, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Mr. Voiland, did you have, I see your... This is Mike Foyland, no questions. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hogan? No. Ms. Avent? I do not. And Mr. Fox? Once again, sorry, but uh, uh, we usually receive an annual report on the progress of staff's work on the comprehensive plan and trying to achieve its goals. Jeff, um, I know we try to shoot for December, January time frame, I think was when we got the first report in what would be 19. Yeah. Um, is, is there any idea of when we may get another one of those? I am hoping to, I'm working towards a, um, having that pulled together for the work session at town council at the end of this month. Um, and if I can get that through there, I will be sure to uh, invite all of you <laughs> to, to that presentation or I can also um, most certainly give you a presentation of that at the following meeting in February. Great, thanks. I, I will certainly leave that up to the chair as far as format, but uh, I think I was just receiving it and kind of, there's been some questions come up about particularly affordable housing, other options, uh, other items that were supposed to be part of the comprehensive plan to be pursued. And I know everybody would have a lot of interest in that, I'm sure. Uh, Absolutely. Also, I, I hate to kind of bring it up, but I've got to, is uh, there's been a lot of media reports about a new VA development that's in the works on Highway 50, which is in a unique location. I just wondered, uh, are we going to see anything on that, or is that going to be just strictly through staff and council? Um, so I believe that one, um, at the very least, it requires the rezoning and then due to the size it does require uh, the special the special use permit um, I'll have to go back and check and just double check and see how that one's going to transfer over uh, but as of this time it would be both the rezoning and it would be a conditional rezoning with a conditional use permit okay thanks I'm, I'm very excited about that coming I've got family members that have to travel currently over to Durham every time they need some type of uh, assistance. And so that's very much needed. Um, I, I just hope that we're citing it in the right location. And I'm sure that when we get the information, we'll be able to tell more about that. So thank you. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. I think with that, unless there's any objections, that will bring this meeting to a close. That we will adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.